We will then move to Senate Joint Memorial 8006, the National Infrastructure Bank. I think Clint is gonna give us a staff briefing. Uh, thank you, Senator Mullet. Um, let me just, there, sorry, the computer just changed on me really quickly. Um, pardon that. Uh, the bill before you, Senate Joint Memorial 8006, concerning a national infrastructure bank. Uh, for background, this joint Senate memorial uh, asks Congress and the President to pass H House of Representatives Bill 3339 into law. And this bill is the National Infrastructure Act of 2021, which would establish the National Infrastructure Bank to facilitate the long-term financing of public infrastructure projects. Specifically, the bank would provide loans to public and private entities for financing, developing, or operating eligible infrastructure projects. Uh, an eligible project must have a sponsor as well as a local, regional, or national significance. The bill treats the bank as a government corporation exempt from tax and treats contributions to the bank as charitable contributions. Projects that receive a loan must pay all laborers and mechanics locally prevailing wages and use only certain US produced construction materials unless a waiver is secured from the bank. Uh, the bank shall issue stock and may also issue bonds and maintain a line of credit from the Federal Reserve System. The bank must apply for a national charter and once chartered, accept deposits from individuals, corporations, and public entities and pay interest on those deposits. Uh, the bill imposes requirements related to the bank's operations, such as minimum reserve requirements and requirements of, for handling lo loan losses. The Congressional uh, Budget Office does not have an official estimate on this legislation at this time. However, from reading reports and from stakeholders on this particular bill, the cost is estimated to be approximately $5 trillion. And as of yesterday, the bill is, uh, the status of the bill is that it is in the House Subcommittee on Railroads, Pipelines, and Hazardous Materials. I'll take any questions you might have at this time. All right. Uh, any questions for Clint before I go to Senator Haskell? All right, Senator Haskell, it's all yours. Thanks, Mr. Chair. I appreciate your hearing this bill as well. Um, you know, since we've been having such a difficult time getting a state infrastructure bank going, I thought we'd uh, push it up to the national, and that's what this one does. And coincidentally, there's already a bill to do that. So, uh, Actually, the, the cost to establish it, um, the lending capacity created is the $5 trillion uh, mark. Uh, the actual capitalization piece is more like $500 billion, I believe. Um, but, uh, and that's due to the leveraging capacity. And I think you all have gotten to hear me proselytize about that enough. But um, the point I want to make is that, you know, we look around us, and to me, I, I look at some of the structures that our parents created, you know, the National Interstate Highway System, or, you know, things like the Panama Canal, or how did they build all of this stuff back in the day? And why can't we stay on top of even the maintenance of all of our facilities now, let alone try and develop new facilities for an infrastructure for our children. And then I look around the world at some of the great stuff that's being done. The world's being transformed, you know, not just with the internet, but um, you know, high-speed rail spanning continents and just connecting people to each other and airports just built everywhere. And then what kind of sacrifices did they have our parents have to make to build all of this infrastructure for us and what's our obligation to do the same thing for our children well it all gets down to financing capacity basically so this whole concept is not new actually uh, fdr had what he called the uh, reconstruction finance corporation which uh, financed a lot of the infrastructure and programs from the New Deal, uh, you know, Grand Coulee Dam, all of this stuff. We have no capacity to do any of that stuff right now. We are at our bonding limit right now, 
And uh, Senator Frock knows this better than any of us, you know, looking at the Capitol. But while well, you, Mr. Chair, as well, uh, we have to always wait for bonds to be repaid before we get any bonding capacity freed up, uh, unless we want to throw cash at it, which is fine too. But this will allow the federal government to leverage its tremendous capacity to help states do the work that we need to do to build that infrastructure for tomorrow. So I, I think there's a, a few folk um, who are better qualified than myself to talk about the details of the National Infrastructure Bank that's being proposed. But um, real quickly, I, I guess I could just say that the American Society of Civil Engineers has ranked the country as a C minus as far as our infrastructure. And I think we've all heard that before, but it's also ranked the state of Washington even lower than that. I think it was like a D plus or something. And even in my own district, I've got a bridge that ranks seven out of a hundred on a scale of um, reliability or quality of that piece of infrastructure, which we don't have the capacity to actually rebuild right now. So this will help us build our infrastructure for the future. And uh, I appreciate your consideration of this uh, joint memorial to ask Congress to please pass that bill. All right, excellent. Are there any questions for Senator Hasegawa before? And Senator Hasegawa does get the award. We have the most people signed in for a bill so far. Granted, it's only our second meeting, but we had uh, 15 people signed in on this bill. So we're going to go from two minutes down to 90 seconds on the testimony because we have to do executive session today for the bills from Tuesday. And so I want to make sure we have enough time for executive session. So with that, I'm going to call up Ali Lee and then Dale Lehar and then Al Alfeka Mutardi. Oh, Ali Lee is not present. So we will move on. So Stanley Forsick would be the third person. So Dale. Alfeca and Stanley would be the first three. And like I said, 90 second timer, please, from staff. And then, oh, and Senator Osagawa, did you, I know you mentioned you had a person who who was coming in from out of state. Did you want, are they okay on time or or, or do you want me to uh, simply call them up next in the next panel? I, I just got the request through my front office. So okay. I didn't actually know who it was. Okay, so let's just go through and we'll get to them when we get to them. Okay, excellent. Thanks. Uh, so, Alfeka, 90 seconds, thanks. Thank you very much. My name is Alfeka Mutardi. I'm a macroeconomist. I'm with the uh, national, uh, the organization for coalition for a national infrastructure bank. And uh, I'm in favor of this uh, joint memorial. A uh, The bill in Congress, HR 3339 would create a $5 trillion public bank. Uh, that would provide Washington state with up to $90 billion in uh, financing to cover all of its infrastructure projects. The bridge that uh, Has uh, Senator Hasegawa mentioned, plus high speed rail, affordable broadband, all those other projects. And the risk associated with the bank would be borne by the government. Uh, and uh, all projects like the Reconstruction Co Finance Corporation uh, would be uh, could be repaid, and uh, this would really boost the economy and get uh, wages and uh, more money into people's pockets in the middle. Thank you very much for considering. And you get brevity points. Well done, Dale. Dale, I think you're still on mute. Oh, wait, you're unmuting. Sorry, um, I'm, a, I'm a resident I'm a, I'm a state of Washington. Uh, I'm based in the Clark County near Vancouver, Washington. Uh, I've been a volunteer um, advisor. Uh, basically, just real fast uh, for my time is that uh, this thing is a really fantastic uh, piece of legislation. It's the right legislation at the right time for the right outcomes. It would be an independent public bank authorized by Congress. It would be debt neutral, meaning the NIB would not add to the federal debt, require new taxes, in fact, <clears throat> for infrastructure projects. The scale and range of the bank is amazing because it would it'd be a national bank, but it would also be focused in on regions. Uh, for example, in the state of Washington, 
if uh, if Washington and Oregon were to work together on our bridge down across the Columbia River, this could do it. This would be a way that it could finance it. It could finance the the uh, the uh, uh, bridges across the Columbia River. There's also been a proposal made by the Cascadia High Speed Line from a high speed line from um, Eugene, Oregon, all the way up to the end of the uh, into Vancouver, Canada. And this line could be financed. It would be a two-track high-speed line. So there's a lot of things that could be done regionally for both Washington and, and Oregon that would be beneficial. And then um, just the final thing is it also just not a bank. It also has what you call an economic uh, acceleration groups, which essentially means that it can help municipalities or communities with the structure of how they can best proceed to economies of scale and new technologies that would help them do it in a proper way and an effective way. Thank you very much. Thanks. Stanley? Oh, Stanley, you're on mute. Thanks so much for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, my name is Stan Forzik. I am on the advisory board for the Coalition for uh, the National Infrastructure Bank. I'm a retired executive from Amtrak, spent over 30 years there. I retired also from an energy uh, uh, consulting company based out of Philadelphia. I'm calling from Southern New Jersey right now. As the Senator uh, so eloquently put, uh, this bank is needed to fix uh, infrastructure, both in Washington and throughout the country. All right, this is probably HR 339 is the most important legislation that we, right now have before us and is is going to be needed to reach 2023 and beyond. W Senator mentioned that FDR had the last infrastructure bank. It was done, it would came to term in 1957. The only other big project this country had to fix infrastructure and rebuild it was the Kennedy Space Program. Those two individuals never said how much money infrastructure was going to cost. They only said that we have to do this for the betterment of the country. And this bill, when the bank goes in and starts financing projects, is going to be for the betterment of every citizen in the United States. Because right now we're in a ball of confusion. People are fighting. People aren't getting anything done. And this is the only way to do it because the appropriations process that we have within the federal uh, government is broken. So thanks so much for your time. Excellent. Uh, okay, let's go on to the next panel. And just so staff can probably guess, I'm just going down to the list of when people signed up. And so next we have Linda, uh, Tossie Lane, and then Felix Ortiz, and then Ellen Brown. Here's Linda. Hello. Um, my name is Linda Tosti Lane, and I'm the legislative co coordinator for the Washington State National Organization for Women. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. I'm here to ask you to pass SJM 8006 to urge the U.S. Congress to pass and the President of the United States to sign the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2021. Much of our country's and state's infrastructure has fallen into disrepair, as noted by Senator Hasegawa. Many communities lack housing, workable transportation networks, clean, safe, and sustainable water, and food production networks. For example, in the area of transportation, many low-income women and their families struggle to find reliable transportation that can affect their health, resulting in missed appointments and poor illness management, even if care is readily available, as well as access to resources for healthy food. The new bank would also create tens of millions of high paying jobs, train our youth with skills that they could use for a lifetime, and lift min many of our disadvantaged persons out of poverty and despair. Additional jobs means more tax revenue for our cities, counties, and state, and improves the lives of those in our communities. A national infrastructure bank is a win-win for our state and local communities, providing reduced cost financial instruments for our local and state government infrastructure projects and a better quality of life for all of Washington State's residents, including women and children. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Uh, Felix. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this important uh, hearing and for the opportunity to testify to you all today. I am Felix Ortiz. I am the former assistant speaker of the New York State Assembly. I was an assemblyman for 26 years, and I was involved in policy making for the assembly and the state. In addition, I served on the executive committee of the National Conference State Legislators, and I was the former chairman of the National Hispanic Caucus State Legislator, which I was also the founder of the same organization. I also would like to express my support to uh, SJM A06, and the reason uh, we are supporting this uh, legislation, this resolution, uh, I have been, I, mean, I have been uh, heavily uh, involved in the effort to create a national infrastructure banking, which is crucial to ensuring the robust our, our economy and recovery. Secondly, I was the first legislator in the uh, in the country to introduce such resolution back four years ago when I was elected to office. Secondly, in 2002, I also introduced a bill uh, to trying to do a bond act of two billion dollars to address some of the infrastructure. A problem and failures that have that have been happening in New York State. As we are all aware, we cannot depend on the on the Congress to pass this particular resolution. Therefore, uh, I'm very helpful. I'm, I'm hopeful that this uh, that the U.S. Uh, the state senator has introduced the resolution to ask Congress and for you, Mr. Chairman, to take on this resolution to vote on it to ask Congress to move forward with the national infrastructure banking. There is water main break every two minutes and an establish of six billion gallons of, tr of treated water loss each day in the U.S. As you probably know, Ida just passed by in, uh, our, our state in New York, and even my own home got flooded as we speak. So compare what is happening in the United States to China, for example. In my capacity as a legislator, as an edu educator, I have been to China over two dozen times and I have seen the changes of building new bridges, new rail lines, new airports, and other infrastructure by connecting urban and rural area to make the flexibility of the economy to flow, as well as to ensure that people will, 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 will go back to their own community when the job at nighttime is done. China say it was going to connect rural area with a big city by rail, and they did it. And so in 15 years, they have built nearly about 24,000 miles of high-speed rail. High-speed rail around the nation, including in the Northwest, will be a game changer to all levels. Bridges in your area in, in, in dangers of collapsing. Housing is becoming incredible, unaffordable. The National Infrastructure Bank could remedy all this. Mr. Chairman, I am very proud to support this SJMA006. And furthermore, I would like to say that I love the Washington State because my daughter lives in Olympia. Thank oh. you. May God bless you and keep your faith. Thank you for your public service, Felix. That's excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Ellen? Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, members of the committee. And thank you, Senator Hesegar, for bringing this bill. Um, I'm chairman of the Public Banking Institute, and we strongly support this bill along with every public banking bill across the country. Um, so uh, one point I wanted to address was about the cost uh, of the bill in, in the uh, federal government. It, the way it's written, it will cost nothing. And this is because the, uh, it will do what the Reconstruction Finance Corporation did. Uh, basically, it's debt for equity swaps. So, so um, people who own federal bonds would um, be given stock in the bank, preferred uh, non-voting stock, and, and they would get to still keep the interest on their on their bonds plus 2% that would come from the profits from the banks. So it wouldn't actually cost our federal government anything in theory. I think Alfeca could address a lot better than I can, I think, but that's my understanding. Um, one point I wanted to address, well, about most countries have, or many big countries have infrastructure banks. It's definitely not a new idea, and we've had it in the past, and China clearly has one. And that is how they build all their uh, infrastructure. The bank issues credit. That's how all banks work. They just write the credit money on, on one side of their books, and then they balance it with the with the contract on the other side of the books to, to repay the debt. And then the proceeds from whatever they built, like the high-speed rail, 
pays back the loan and it works out very well. Uh, 20, 25% of banking assets globally are owned by public, publicly owned banks. That's over $49 trillion. Um, one objection we often get is that public banks would compete with the private banks in the in the state or city or the local community, but that's not actually true. We only have one model. That's the Bank of North Dakota, which has been around for over a hundred years, and they partner with their local banks. And because of that, so they help with liquidity, they help with um, capital uh, with capitalization, and because of that. They have six times as many local banks or as many banks per capita as the national average. And plus, the, the Bank of North Dakota is very profitable for the state. It's for the 19 years before, <laughs> before um, the COVID, so before 2020, it had a 20% return on equity on average. And even in um, 2020, it was 15%, so, you know, quite good. And, of course, the profits are just uh, partly distributed back to the state and partly go to capitalization for new loans. So they make cheap loans into the community, and the National Infrastructure Bank would do the same. So it would be making loans that would be partly serviced by workers in the state or um uh, and Alan, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure other people have time to testify. Okay. You, you've got 90 seconds over your 90 seconds. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you have any final remarks? or? That? Well, so that money would go into the local bank. So it would actually help the local banks to have a national infrastructure bank. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next panel. I just realized we have former Senator Marilyn Chase on the next panel. I did not know she was on the list. We would have bumped her up sooner. We have Jack Hanna and then Amber King. Um, uh, good morning, everyone, members of the committee. My name is Jack Hanna. I'm a board member of the National Infrastructure Bank. Thank you for allowing me to have the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm not going to re reiterate what the others have spoken to, but I will say this. The bank has been employed four times in our country's past. Each and every time it has made money. Uh, the first time was created under uh, Alexander Hamilton to build our ports and roads, and um, also employed by Abraham Lincoln to fund the Transcontinental Railroad. Uh, the beauty of this bank is it leverages funding all without creating new taxes and no public debt. And uh, uh, given our country's circumstances at the moment, that is key, uh, I think, as to the uniqueness of this bank. It employs private funding to lend to state and local governments who own 90 percent of the public in infrastructure to address the critical needs that we're, our country faces now. That includes broadband in rural areas, roads and bridges such as I-5 and our ports, high-speed rail such as Cascadia, water projects to remove lead out of our public drinking systems, housing needs, and uh, hardening our national electrical grid. Our country really hasn't addressed our infrastructure needs since the 1956 Highway Act and the 1960 Space Program, as Stanley said. Also, we are falling behind our international economic competitors regarding infrastructure. The, the gross domestic product percentage of investment in our infrastructure in the United States, 2.4%. The economic community, 4.4%. China, 8.4%. We are falling behind. Given the major transformations of our economy uh, that it is going through with COVID and addressing global warming, we cannot keep up internationally if we don't invest in our infrastructure. Thank you very much for the opportunity today. Excellent. Senator Chase, great to see you again. Good morning. Good morning, uh, uh, Senator Mullet, Senator Nazar. It's great to see you all, too. I'm very pleased to be here. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, uh, for the record, for some of you who do not know me, I am former, former Senator Marilyn Chase, and I am speaking in favor of SJM 8006. Our state has extensive experience with this financial strategy for economic growth. In 1933, Congress 
uh, understood the importance of infrastructure investment as an economic recovery strategy and to provide jobs for those who were out of work. The Public Works Administration was created in 1933. The Public Works Administration helped fund tens of thousands of infrastructure projects across the nation, many of which we still utilize today, including both Grand Coulee Dam and the Bonneville uh, uh, Dam. Grand Coulee employed 8,800 uh, construction workers and Bonneville Dam for an additional 3,000 workers. In 1940, the Pacific Northwest had no capacity to produce aluminum. Six years later, the Pacific Northwest was producing 36% of the nation's aluminum. It is estimated that one third of the aluminum that, is used, that was used in aircraft during World War II came from the power generated by the Grand Coulee Dam and the Bonneville Dam and all of the power needed for production at Hanford. The state of Washington was rebuilt with the ongoing support of federal programs providing funds for public works projects and for the unemployed. For example, 18 lodges and camps were built around Washington state in 1935 for the transit and the homeless. The chamber, the, the uh, CCC, uh, uh, Civilian Conservation Corps is one of the best known of the federal programs by 1938 and 39, the state of Washington hosted around 4,000 workers per month in 38 camps around the state. They built trails, improved campgrounds and public structures and managed, managed erosion and fires, built lookouts across the state, including Mount Rainier National Park and Olympia National Park. Today, we have the opportunity to lend our support to, for a newly established national infrastructure bank that could potentially provide thousands of jobs and stimulate our economy. I urge you to support Senate Joint Memorial 8006. Thank you for your time. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, do we have any questions for our former colleague? I knew you were gonna go over the 90 seconds, so no, I have been you. expecting that. Thank you, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I tried, I really tried. <laughs> Amber, go ahead. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you, Chair Mullet and ranking members of the committee. My name is Amber King. Uh, I am here today to speak in favor of Senate Joint Memorial 8006 and all of the other bills you are looking at this morning, um, as I've been impacted by all of them. Um, I am a Washington State mother, uh, taxpayer, and small business owner, and coming to you with many years of experience in higher education, construction, and finance fields. And I was one of the authors of the current state democratic platform writing the labor and economic justice plank. But I also grew up in rural Alaska, and I cannot tell you how critical that this bill is for Americans all across the country, for our health and our vitality. We still have villages without running water, and we need critical and meaningful infrastructure investment immediately in this country. We cannot wait another day, a year, a month for clean water around this country to put out nuclear fires that have been burning under the city of St. Louis for decades now. Our health is at great risk because of our lack of infrastructure investment. You know, I have worked in um, education and as a single mother with daughters, I'm trying to figure out what their futures are going to hold and what what kind of education and training programs are going to be available for them. My grandmother was a Rosie the Riveter in Boeing during the war. My father was a land surveyor. We are tightly connected to the economies and the trades, and we need more blue collar support across this country. This bill has amazing potential for, you know, healing a lot of the political divide that our country is really failing at. So I urge your support and I thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to the next panel. We have Martin Tallarico and then Alan Green and Linda Jenkins. Just so members of the committee know, our goal is to try to go to executive session roughly around 9.30. And that way we'll have, make sure we have time to finish before 10 o'clock. Martin, go ahead. Great, thank you, Senator Mullet. 
and uh, Chair Mullet and uh, Vice Chair uh, Hasegawa. My name is Martin Tallarico. I live in West Seattle, the 34th uh, Legislative District. I'm a member of uh, Seattle Indivisible, who has also endorsed uh, the National Infrastructure Bank. And we are now uh, have just formed a, a group um, of Washingtonians or toners, as they're sometimes called, for the public banking movement across the country and in le local and state government. So it's in, going to be meeting on a biweekly basis to, to do that. And we all support the National Infrastructure Bank. One thing I might add, in addition to what has already been so, so well spoken of, um, the National Infrastructure Bank um, is estimated uh, to create 25 million jobs across the country. And these are not just low paying jobs where people have to have work two or three jobs just to make a living. These are what's known as Bacon Davis wages, union type jobs that pay a good, good wage. Also, one thing I would like to note, um, the previous, previous four infrastructure banks or national banks that were formed, the, the last one as was noted was through FDR. And uh, Jesse Jones, as head of the Reconstruction Finance Corporation, that actually not only got us out of the Great Depression, but helped us win World War II. It was amazingly profitable. Each of the national, each of the four national banks have been profitable for the uh, and added money to the U.S. Treasury. But what makes this bank different is all those those four other banks. They all had sunset clauses. This bank will not have a sunset clause. It will be good for the economy. I think it will be good for our country. And as Amber said, as so eloquently said, help heal our national divide. We are so divided right now. I think if we got this done, it would give Americans new hope in their government, um, both in red and blue states. Also, this bank would, would support both hard and soft infrastructure. That's not only bridges and roads, but sc schools, um, hospitals, um, broadband internet across the country, both in rural, urban, and um, poverty-stricken communities. I think it's it's a win-win. The more I learn about it, the more I love it. I, I urge you to support uh, SJM 8006 and the National Infrastructure Bank. Thank you, and I'm willing to take any questions as well. Thank you. Excellent. Alan? Oh, Alan, you're on mute. Good morning. My name is uh, Alan Green. I'm a former state representative in the state of Missouri. Also have the opportunity, first of all, Mr. Chair, committee, thank you for being here. Uh, this is very important to me when we talk about the infrastructure bank here. Uh, over the years, I've had the opportunity to serve as a state representative here in the state of Missouri. And I served on the Finance Committee, Economic Development Committee, Workforce Development Committee, and also Budget. Uh, this particular bill, why it's so important too, is I had the opportunity to work very closely with our state Department of Transportation, MoDOT, and had a chance to look at tow roads and how do we finance those, look at gas tax, look at, again, uh, bonding, and how do we finance these projects and also public and private partnerships. We were 30 years behind on projects here in the state of Missouri. I'll say that again. We were 30 years behind on projects in the state of Missouri here. So if we can get something like this on a national level, whereas again, the money trickles down to the state level, that can move us forward, not only statewide, but also on a national level. And so I'm standing here saying that I am in support of the Senate bill or Senate resolution uh, 8006 and also of the House uh, resolution if we can get that passed. And so if I have any questions, I would love to answer any, if there's any questions. Excellent. And thank you for your public service. I hope we've had thank you. elected officials and now Missouri. We're getting a, <laughs> Senator Hasegawa's done an excellent job here. Linda. Good morning. Thank you, um, everybody, Chair, and everybody else that's in this meeting. You've actually heard a lot of the background from very eloquent speakers. My name is Linda Jenkins. I live in King County. I talking to you all from Woodenville, Washington. And last night, I had the opportunity to speak to you today. Um, so this is my first time. So I'm just saying that my pronouns are she and her. I'm a mother. I'm a grandmother. I am a small business owner. I had a union shop. I, as you can tell from my accent, I'm an immigrant. 
I came here and got my green card, became a citizen. I'm a volunteer at the moment. I am the chair of the 45th Legislative District. I'm also, two years ago, I was, a, well, I was also a state committee member, and we really need this. This is a no-brainer. This is a bipartisan bill for our families, for our legacy, for all of us. And in all honesty, you passing this 8006 will also put you in a great position to say you're supporting this bill. It obviously, it's a no-brainer to me, and I and uh, I can't answer any questions. I think speakers before me and the way that our Senator Hasegawa has uh, spoken about it very eloquently and also the speaker. So please support 8006. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And that gets us to our last two panelists. We have Lou Spencer and then Ruth Frulin. Yes, hello. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Very good. I just wanted to say good morning. And um, I am um, Lou Spencer. I'm a business agent with Plumbers and Gas Fitters Local Union Number 5. We operate out of Washington, D.C. I'm a strong supporter of the National Infrastructure Bank and a strong supporter of the National Infrastructure Bank Coalition. My small local union wrote a resolution in support of the National Infrastructure Bank. We took it to our International Union Summer Convention last August in San Diego, and um, the United Association of Plumbers and Steamfitters, our international union, supported the National Infrastructure Bank. It was unanimous over almost 3,400 delegates. On the other end of the scale, I live in a small rural county in Virginia, the Commonwealth of Virginia, Essex County, and I had a very conservative group, Board of Supervisors, debate the National Infrastructure Bank for three months, and they passed this recently. So. We have a large international plumbers union on one scale, and we had a small um, board of supervisors in a small rural county in Virginia. This will bring the country together. It'll provide gainful employment for our citizens. And um, th this is just a really great effort to improve our country and bring our people together. I, I support this, and I hope that um, I hope your legislature will do the same. Good luck with this effort. Thank you. And Ruth, you get to finish everything up. Oh, you're on mute. There you go. There we go. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, for this opportunity for a citizen who's been behind a public bank for Washington State ever since the 2008 scandals and Senator Hasegawa's courageous and persistent le legislation for originally the Washington Investment Trust to be able to testify in support of Senate Joint Memorial 8006, which urges passage of the National Infrastructure Bank. I'm a geologist and educator and in favor of reclaiming the power of our public sector. Our country can ill afford not to repair, build, and prepare for climate-driven disruptions to our infrastructure. Everything we need could be provided through the NIB's ability to leverage infrastructure loans using the same fractional reserve system that private banks use routinely. I'm going to take a little bit uh, tact here, different tact, because I'm going to focus on, no, we need to get away from reckless Wall Street gambling, supporting that, and two, material improvement in our public benefits with profits from these loans going back into public coffers. Um, I note that the Federal Reserve just released the names of the banks among the largest borrowers, J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup that had received $4.5 dollars in cumulative loans in the last quarter of 2019, well before the court, the COVID pan panic uh, pandemic hit under its emergency repo loan operations for liquidity prices that has never been explained. I can provide reference for this if anyone needs to know it because it has been way underreported. But it is, is it truly a shared American value to provide money for reckless banks and routinely the neglect our local state and federal infrastructure, not to mention the larger context that we need affordable higher education and resilience in the face of worsening national shocks from climate, environmental, and social disruptions, our continuing healthcare crisis, and tragic, costful, wasteful wars. Whittling down the potential to build back better is a loser's idea. We need to be bold, we need to be innovative, 
and we need to use the tested and proven power of public banking to finance our way forward like the winners that we are. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. And that concludes our, our public testimony on Senate Joint Morrow 8006. And I don't know who wants to tell Speaker Pelosi that Senator Hasegawa was coming for her, but I don't think she knows what, what's in store. <laughs> she can feel Senator Hasegawa's wrath on public banking. <laughs> I like it. Uh, okay, with that, the public hearing is concluded.